Christopher Nolan is known for approaching different genres film by film, and Oppenheimer was no exception. He approached the genre he'd wanted to tackle for over two decades with the biography of J. Robert Oppenheimer. But like with all of his previous work, Nolan, for one, brought his unique style to it, and two, infused a new flavour within a genre that typically focuses on much smaller films. With Oppenheimer, we got the best of big and smaller filmmaking techniques techniques that built upon the foundations of the genre and yet told a widely important and intimate story about one of the most game-changing figures. Combining this all into one movie and making it feel natural was a hell of a task to pull off, especially once you read the source material, but I believe that Nolan did. So in this video, I'm going to be listing the main reasons why I think Oppenheimer is one of the best biopic films ever made. This essay will contain spoilers, so if you do happen to be someone who hasn't seen the film yet, then I would recommend watching this video after you've seen it. Before I get into it though, if you want to keep up to date on any of my future content for Christopher Nolan's Oppenheimer, then don't forget to support this upload by giving it a like rating, subscribing to the channel, and turning on your notifications. But without further ado, let's dive into my thoughts on why I believe Oppenheimer is the ultimate biopic film. So Christopher Nolan has been making films throughout his career that subvert the audience's expectations of genre. Instead of just a Batman film, we got a neo-noir, a crime thriller, and eventually a war movie. Instead of a traditional World War II film, we got a survival thriller. Instead of just a cool science fiction project, we got a heist thriller. And now with Oppenheimer, rather than just getting a traditional biopic, we got a movie that once again is coupled with Nolan's skills in the thriller department. He injected all stages of Oppenheimer's life with a sense of urgency, whether it be the troubles he faced in his early years, the race to build the bomb, the effects it had on him once it was used, and then the degrading hearings afterwards. There was barely any action and we simply stayed with Oppenheimer and saw his perspective during a world-changing yet challenging moment in history. Nolan took a biopic of many conversations, saw the relation in it for today, and made that interesting for a modern audience. Now it's no surprise that Nolan was interested in making a biopic because he has been for many years. In fact, he wanted to approach the genre over two decades ago, having almost made a Howard Hughes biopic with Jim Carrey in the lead role. He claimed that the script was one of the best he'd ever written and that it would have been adapted with a similar approach to perspective in dealing with the complexities of Hughes' life. There was a section of the story that focused on Hughes' FBI file, including the business activities of the enigmatic billionaire. But unfortunately, it would never come to light as Martin Scorsese was making The Aviator with Leonardo DiCaprio and Nolan would go on to make Batman Begins. Now, however, we've come full circle with a Nolan biopic that, like his idea for Hughes, tackles an important figure in history through both an objective and subjective lens. It's always been his desire to make a more intimate and thrilling biopic, yet one that also feels just as large in scope. And that is what I think makes Oppenheimer stand out and become a unique film in this genre all on its own. The typical approach to a biopic is normally much smaller, and I think there was questions over how Nolan would put his signature blockbuster trademarks on a story like J. Robert Oppenheimer's. Yes, we know Nolan had done great character work in the past with films like Memento, Insomnia, and The Prestige, but at this point in his career, how would he marry his trademark event film with a complex biographical story. Well, as we learn, and as I learnt leading up to the release of the film when reading the American Prometheus book, Oppenheimer's story was actually perfect for that particular approach. It's a story that we all connect to, that we relate to, and one that reflects the anxieties of the future that's approaching. It features a somewhat mission that happens to be the most important in our recent history, and yet it features the most intimate portrayal of morality through its central character. The way I describe Oppenheimer is as a film that represents the best of big and small filmmaking, one with intimacy, yet one of importance and scope. 
And by opening up that canvas of an approach to a biopic film, it's clear that Nolan had the room to innovate on many areas of it, giving us a different kind of project in this genre. For one, Nolan brought his trademark style to the biopic by giving us a non-linear story with challenging perspectives. Rather than skipping back and forward from just the perspective of Oppenheimer, we go back and forth in time between a subjective view from Oppie and an objective view from Louis Strauss. The intricacy of this cutting gives us a somewhat chain reaction, just like how both sequences are literally titled Fission and Fusion, where one thing in colour is brought up in the black and white. Not just this, but as we reach the third act, you realise that a narrative chain reaction has occurred and the result of something in one time period has affected the other. And while this is quite a new way to approach the biopic, the reason it works is because it is a very blueprint of Nolan himself. He did something similar all the way back in Memento with the subjective and the objective, but it was all with Leonard Shelby. By doing it in a biopic, pick with Oppenheimer using two different characters and having the real history and transcripts to inform that, it becomes its own new kind of approach. On top of this, we get moments replayed in multiple sequences, but from these two very different perspectives, and it helps inform a complete picture of why things happened the way they did. We see why Oppenheimer reacted the way he did to individual moments, why Strauss became as focused as he was on destroying the man and the anxiety that made people question what Oppenheimer believed in relation to the weapon they built. It really touches on this idea of the subjective experience of cinema, something that Nolan has been fascinated with and has experimented with in different ways throughout his filmography. Coming to the filmmaking, I think it's quite evident that Nolan and his team successfully reflected the intimate yet huge structure of this story. For one, the IMAX cinematography by Heuter van Heutemer was utilised in a unique way in comparison to the director's other event films. On The Dark Knight, Inception and the films that followed, projects which are responsible for pushing the IMAX format, we got movies that used the cameras primarily with action in mind or sequences that have a lot of spectacle to them. It was an effort to pioneer tech that had been used for space documentaries and applying that to the big blockbusters of today. But with Oppenheimer, I believe he's reinvented that wheel once again and done so in a way that so fittingly works for a biopic. In the film, we got more intimate close-ups of Killian Murphy and then with the dialogue scenes, non-70mm IMAX photography was still used, adding a layer of detail detail that really puts you in the shoes of the central character. You see every bit of anxiety, every chilling expression or moment of guilt that Oppenheimer feels. And yet the movie still had the sweeping IMAX establishing shots, visuals in Oppenheimer's mind, and moments like with the Trinity test where you feel the weight of the story reach its most tense point. It wasn't just the cinematography though that reflected this intimate yet large in scope approach. The editing by Jennifer Lane applied fast cuts in moments where the story needs an element of tension, yet less cuts when it slows down for intimate conversations or a character's reaction to something that has happened. And then the score combines the use of the violin with epic sounding synths, showcasing tension when it was needed, yet also a soft and emotional core. Ludwig Granson said in interviews that he and Nolan were particularly interested in the violin because in one quick note you could go from something deeply calm into something uncontrollable and erratic. So across the board, the filmmaking reflects the approach that Nolan and co took in making a biopic that was deeply personal, yet one that was infused with a sense of real urgency and scale. I don't think the genre has been tackled like this before, and nor do I think it has been done so seamlessly as it was here. Oppenheimer could have felt misjointed with all of its tones and subgenres, as the central figure story has to be at the very centre of all of it. But because his story is one that has to be covered fully and one that has to be approached with all of the abstract tones at play, the merging of big and smaller filmmaking techniques worked in its favour. 
I think this gives the biopic genre a combination of scales that we haven't quite seen before. Nolan is known for challenging the foundations of genre, but I don't think he's come as close as he has to merging the art film with the blockbuster than he did on Oppenheimer. The risk of this could have resulted in a film that went wrong in so many ways, but instead it helped propel it into something very unique. Nolan took a gamble with a three hour R-rated biopic that features lots of talking, and it resulted in a film that grossed more than many event films did this year. And I think it worked so well as a film because like every good event film, it has a higher level of importance. With a great blockbuster, we are moved by the story and thematics of the piece, even if we are also thrilled by the action it contains and the visuals it presents on screen. Oppenheimer subverted that reaction within the biopic genre and moved us through the epic yet intimate telling of the man at the very centre, one who is one of the most important people who ever lived. As we end the film intrigued by Oppenheimer's life, we also end it knowing that it affects all of us equally. And this ending is something that Nolan crafted specifically for the film, only inspired by the meetings between Oppenheimer and Einstein in the American Prometheus book. He took a decades old Pulitzer Prize winning book, put his stamp of urgency on it, and made it relatable for today's audience. To do all of this is one hell of an accomplishment, and for me, I I think Nolan has hit the sweet spot between both his character work and his big budget approaches to filmmaking. But that was my video discussing why I believe Christopher Nolan's Oppenheimer is the ultimate biopic movie. It's my favourite film of the year so far, it's in my top three of Nolan's filmography, and every time I re-watch it, the immense approach to telling this story stands out even more so. I think that is partly down to how Nolan combines subgenres in the format of the biopic. It's a perfect fit for the director's style and trademarks, and it will be interesting to see if he approaches is the biopic again in the future. Who knows, maybe we'll eventually get that Howard Hughes film. Whatever is next though, after the consistent success and quality of his films in numerous genres, I trust whatever direction he will go in. But let me know down below in the comment section what you thought of Christopher Nolan's Oppenheimer, alongside whether you agree with the points I have raised in this video surrounding it being the perfect biopic. I will be doing more more topical uploads on the film in the time ahead, so keep a lookout for whenever I post. For much more content on Christopher Nolan and his latest film Oppenheimer, then subscribe to the channel and turn on your notifications. Also, if you enjoyed this video, remember to leave a like rating and follow me on social media via the links in the description. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I've been Cortex, and as always, make some noise.